The evolution of doctors wearing medical coats from black to white. Until the late 1800s, doctors wore black, similar to priests and other clergy members. Physicians dressed themselves in black and were painted in black garb until the late 19th century, writes Mark S. Hochberg, MD in the AMA Journal of Ethics. Black attire was and is considered formal, example, today's tuxedo. Until about 1900, physicians wore black for their patient interactions since medical encounters were thought of as serious and formal matters. Clergymen also dressed in black, which indicated the solemn nature of their role in encounters with parishioners. An additional or alternative possibility for the dark garb might be that, until the late 19th century, seeking medical advice was usually a last resort and frequently a precursor to death. Until the last third of the 1800s, an encounter with a physician rarely benefited the patient. In fact, up to that point, virtually all of medicine entailed many worthless cures and much quackery. Dr. Hochberg said the idea of white coats in association with doctors caught on in the USA around 1889 when painter Joseph Aikens unveiled his renowned painting, The Agnew Clinic, from the University of Pennsylvania. Hayes Agnew, MD was shown wearing a white coat while performing surgery, with assistants also clad in white. This fostered an image of doctors being clean and sanitary in their white attire, a far cry from the snake oil charlatans with bogus cures in the Victorian era. The late 1800s and early 1900s were a period of great change in medicine in both the US and Canada. In 1910, the Flexner Report by Abraham Flexner and Herman Gates Weisscott created sweeping changes in North American medical schools to separate the good from the substandard. Thomas P. Duffy, MD wrote extensively about the Flexner Report in a 2011 issue of the Yale Journal of Biology and Medicine. The Flexner Report of 1910 transformed the nature and process of medical education in America with a resulting elimination of proprietary schools and the establishment of the biomedical model as the gold standard of medical training, Dr. Duffy writes. This transformation occurred in the aftermath of the report, which embraced scientific knowledge and its advancement as the defining ethos of a modern physician. Part of that ethos included having medical students, doctors and nurses wear white coats. Dr. Hochberg notes in the AMA Journal of Ethics that Flexner's report led to the closure of a large number of borderline medical educational institutions and the restructuring of medical education around laboratory science. Change actually came to the medical world years earlier when an 1892 textbook of medicine by William Osler, as well as American military bacteriologist and pathologist Major Walter Reed, MD's chronicle of how malaria was spread by mosquitoes during construction of the Panama Canal, drove the idea of the value of cleanliness and antisepsis as one of the foundations of medical science, according to Dr. Hochberg. The white coat as a symbol of medical excellence and purity continued to gain momentum as the 20th century progressed. Some believed street clothes helped spread germs easily, and there are many theories about why white coats became more and more popular for doctors. By 1915, white coats were standard garb for surgeons. By the end of World War II, with the advent of antibiotics, white coats became standard for medical students, doctors, and nurses in North America.